Good evening, esteemed delegates of this year's Athens Democracy Forum. My name is Dana Dejani. I am a performance poet, a heartist, and I believe that poetry is more powerful than politics, or as we heard earlier today in Teens for Democracy, art brings pathos to politics. And it's my intention to infuse some poetry throughout the conference in between our conversations to bring some of that pathos to the stage. The piece I will share tonight is called Repattern the Fractal. It was commissioned by the Gates Foundation last year, but before I go into that piece, I wanted to share a quote that has inspired my work throughout the years. And it speaks to our theme in this year's ADF. The quote is attributed to Goethe, who said, hope is a memory of the future. Hope is a memory of the future. I find this to be completely beautiful, a tiny poem unto itself. And um, it plays with time and knowing. Hope is a memory of the future. Do we dare to hope? Do we dare to remember? What are our mutual rights in birth, in death, and in life? What does progress look like when it's free from, how can we survive? What's the point of life? Am I going to die? Is there a paradise where we sold a lie? It's not hard to explain. In this, we're all the same, and nothing can save us from our fate. Not followers, name, or fame. We're all destined to go the same way. So what is the contribution we will each make in our short stay here? Nature has recently served us brews of our own medicine, pandemic, fire, flood, putrid stews of cataclysm. What goes around comes around, no exception. We are all connected. The madness as we scrambled for a cure, we've got it now, I'm sure. All life is sacred, related. Nature does not discriminate. She knows rupture and repair are natural states, innate rhythms, and our adaptability lies in our responsiveness, our resilience. Of the lessons learned in COVID, the most profound was one of interdependence. We do not exist as separate entities. We are networks upon networks, caught in a web of web, rippling butterfly effect. Reaching critical mass, we can adapt the species and a live human organism. Within one body, Many different systems intertwine, teeming with life. So too are there intricate and adaptive systems within nature. Multiple agents with free will reorganize. The more we connect, collaborate, the greater our chaos complexity. And as our system reaches peak instability, it avalanches into a new order, efficiency. Any single agent can be a focal point for change. We each contribute in our own way. All systems can learn. Evolution is programmed into our DNA, an instinct to repattern the fractal. We can't always predict the outcome, but we can influence it. If we consider that this life is a mutual endeavor, and that we get the privilege of sharing this existence, being human together, then we'll know that it's not about what has passed or what is to come, but what we do today in our quest for truth and hope and love and home. We go on, but together we grow strong. Have you ever heard this parable? A man dies and falls to hell, and there he comes upon a table covered in a lavish feast, and on it sat patrons who desired to eat. Next to each plate, a spoon a meter long. It reached across the buffet so the patrons couldn't feed themselves on their own, the spoon so far away. And there they sat, the lot of them, each with empty plates, starving rage, food within their gaze. Then, whoosh! A switch of fates, as the recently deceased was swept up to heaven's gates, a cosmic accounting mistake. Though there in heaven, 
He found himself upon the same grand buffet, a feast upon the table, lay enormous spoons the same. Yet the difference in heaven was the people in their ways. You see, those seated didn't try to serve themselves, yet together they all ate. Those angels knew how to use their spoons to serve their neighbors who responded in kind. And so it is fabled that heaven and hell are simply paradigms of the mind to live for oneself or to share and be kind. We have the tools today to reorganize and contribute to a greater web beyond our siloed seclusion, so let's do it. Use technology and break through it to a paradigm of care, and we will evolve. Solve the global crises, account for global need, redistribute resources. The Inca called it Aini, the principle of reciprocity. Today for you and tomorrow for me. Take care of each other, give and receive. That is the way to end all tragedies. Perhaps we have chosen hell on earth. If we shift our perspectives, we may have it reversed. So what could heaven on earth look like? A future where no one is hungry, cost is no burden, and war is a memory. In this future, technology is developed and deployed in service to the many. We have achieved global democracy, and we live in harmony with our ecology. That future begins with an effort today, preferably yesterday, actually. You see, our ancestors planted trees under which they knew we'd never under which they knew they'd never sit, but we did. That's true legacy. Remember it. Looking to the past provides perspective, yet nostalgia is an enemy of innovation. The future requires vision, sacrifice, and dedication. So may the seeds planted through the discourse these days be sown through our actions and the choices we make to grow into a world of true equity as we invest in our mutual future, one destiny, and our inevitable interconnection. Thank you.